While some of our cubes are focusing on technological innovations like Tony, others are focusing on other kinds of forms of scholarly discovery, as we'll see in this next segment called the M-cubed difference. M-cubed is not only about empowering faculty to move forward with promising ideas, but also about educating the next generation of innovators, whether postdoctoral fellows, graduate students, or undergraduates. M-cubed would like to thank the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts, LSNA, for its contributions toward undergraduate and graduate students in CUBES, as well as the College of Engineering and Medical School for their respective support for graduate students. We want to especially recognize the Rackham Graduate School's vital and generous support for Rackham Graduate Student Research Assistants participating in CUBES with a contribution of nearly half a million dollars as well as Rackham's thought thoughtful review of mentoring plans for these emerging researchers. Please now welcome the Vice Provost for Academic Affairs, Graduate Studies, Dean of the Horace H. Rackham School of Graduate Studies, and Mary C. Bromage, College Professor of Organizational Behavior and Public Policy, Janet Weiss. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am honored to uh, have been given the opportunity to introduce the first set of presentations by our colleagues who have been engaged in creative collaboration. So I often describe the university as a giant candy store where you wander in and you are dazzled and overwhelmed by the quality and variety of the feast of offerings that are available to us. So from the kinds of adventures in entrepreneurship described by our keynote speaker to the deep excursions into the culture of the past, around every corner uh, is the chance to learn something important and exciting. And for those of us who love research, who love ideas, which probably is all of us here today in this room, uh, that candy store metaphor, I think, applies to today's event and to this morning's panel in particular. So whatever expertise you have, you will be uh, stretched and um, delighted, I think, by hearing about the creative ideas of our colleagues. Uh, but then I read a little bit more about the worlds that we will explore with this first panel. The availability of food, sexually transmitted diseases, political corruption, powerful music, rapid climate change leading to catastrophic disease. I think we've got all the ingredients for a juicy episode of a TV drama with plots ripped from the headlines. So is it a candy store or is it an episode of scandal? Uh, we will listen together and find out. So our first cube uh, presenting today uh, is on the emergence of locally owned food businesses in Detroit. The three faculty participants are Sarah Soderstrom from LSNA, Catherine Hines from the School of Kinesiology, and Wayne Baker from the Ross School of Business. They have six students working with them, five undergraduates and one graduate student. They are uh, Tara Tarazi from the Ross School, Paula Mendez, Isabella Morrison, Caitlin Keene, and Samantha Gray from LSNA, and Jen Zdroydrick from the School of Kinesiology. Our speakers this morning will be Professor Sonderstrom, Professor Hines, and Paula Mendez. Thank you. We are really excited to be here today to share our cube with you. The focus of our research is the Detroit food economy, which we find to be a growing and inspiring aspect of Detroit revitalization. 
Within the local Detroit food scene, there's a juxtaposition of focus on collaboration on the one hand and competition on the other between entrepreneurs who are all trying to succeed within their businesses. At times, brick-and-mortar restaurants will open their kitchens to a new chef, potentially a future competitor, to help him or her launch his business. Entrepreneurs network informally and through nonprofit organizations to share information about financing, marketing, real estate, how to handle human relations issues. Within the food movement in Detroit, there seems to be an underlying aspect of sustainability, a commitment to social, environmental, and economic issues, as well as social justice, a focus on local economies and Detroit revitalization. We find within the city of Detroit, there's a strong sense of hope, innovation, and commitment to improving the city. The spark that ignited our cube was a panel discussion hosted by the Interdisciplinary Committee on Organizational Studies here at U of M. They brought together a number of food entrepreneurs from Detroit to come and share their experiences as being part of this fledgling movement. As we saw and heard about all of the things going in in Detroit, our curiosity was sparked. What is it that enables this positive organizing? And what, if any, connection exists between this new entrepreneurial activity and some of the larger city investments that we hear about? And thus, a cube was born. Kate, Wayne, and I had not worked together before this cube, uh, but had known of each other. We used the M-cubed opportunity to build a strong collaboration, a foundation of many shared interests, but also unique capabilities that we brought to the table. We all shared an interest in learning more about organizations' role in positive organizing, doing well by doing good, yet brought in complementary perspectives on business, environment, nonprofits, and sport organizations. So let's meet the team. Sarah Wayne and I served as the core CUBE leadership. Using a qualitative approach, we created a team that would allow us to form a deep understanding of some organizations, at the same time, a broader knowledge of the roles that a variety of different types of organizations are playing, including small startups, established businesses, sport organizations, and business incubators, and the connections between them in the Detroit food revitalization landscape. Students across schools and disciplines played an important and play an important role on our team. Jen, a doctoral student, served as the project coordinator for the field study. Sammy and Caitlin, undergrad students, helped collect archival data and conduct interviews with entrepreneurs, activists, and executives. Paula, Tara, and Izzy worked as participant observers embedded in the field, writing field notes about their experiences day-to-day -day working with entrepreneurs. So across this team, we have spent more than 1,200 hours in the field collecting data in Detroit. We've written more than 1,500 pages of field notes and collected data on more than 200 organizations in the Detroit food revitalization space. One organization that's a particularly important partner in this effort is Food Lab. Food Lab is a community of food entrepreneurs who are committed to building a diverse ecosystem of businesses in Detroit focusing on food. They all commit to a triple bottom line approach, addressing environmental, social, and economic issues in their business plans. Together, there are nearly 60 members and almost as many allies of Food Lab, working to support each other, share best practices and knowledge, and really impact and grow the recovering Detroit food economy. There you go. Jess Daniel and Anna Springer, who were part of the original ICOS panel, lead Food Lab and partnered with us for this work. This provided us a great opportunity as representatives of the university to reflect on how we can better partner with communities. This at times, because we wanted to really commit to being a strong ally of Food Lab, meant engaging in dialogue around the power and privilege that comes with being an academic at the University of Michigan and building the trust and respect necessary to have a collaborative, mutually beneficial partnership. 
As part of this work, Food Lab hosted three of our、uh, undergraduate research fellows for the summer: Tara, Izzy, and Paula. The fellows played a dual role. On the one hand, they were working with Food Lab, engaging in efforts such as a membership drive, revamping the communication strategy, and launching a Kitchen Connect program. And on the other hand, they were participant researchers, writing field notes, conducting interviews, and reflecting on their experiences. Paula is here today to talk a little bit about her experience on this team. Being a part of this project as an undergraduate was beyond amazing. I'm very passionate about social and environmental justice, and I was able to bring these passions, along with my curiosity and strong willingness to learn, to my work and research with Food Lab. As an undergraduate, I was able to assume an internship-like role in the organization, where I could observe interactions in organizational life and ask questions to organizational leaders and food entrepreneurs. Given my initial lack of experience in the Detroit food scene, I was also able to bring in a fresh perspective to the research context. Over the course of the summer, I developed trust and relationships with the Food Lab community that allowed me to collect rich data to benefit the study. I also helped Food Lab launch their Detroit Kitchen Connect project in collaboration with Eastern Market. Detroit Kitchen Connect is a management and technical assistance hub that offers low-cost commercial kitchen space and technical assistance to food entrepreneurs in their own communities. Over the summer, I worked with the Detroit Kitchen Connect team to launch the pilot and recruit and admit entrepreneurs into the program. This experience was extremely beneficial to me. Being involved in research in this way allowed me to gain an understanding of research in a way that cannot be done in the classroom. The immersion and intensive research experience is also going to be extremely helpful to me this coming year as I write my own honors thesis. Working with Food Lab also gave me practical experience. Working with a grassroots organization to develop programs to benefit a community and solidified my future interest in going into the field of community activism. Finally, the relationships I built with the research team, as well as the Detroit Kitchen Connect and Food Lab communities, are very valuable to me, both personally and professionally. Students like Paula brought a lot of energy and excitement to the project, a curiosity and a fresh perspective. And as faculty, working with them and on this project was a unique opportunity to bring, to bring together our mentorship, research, and teaching. Including Food Lab, there are a number of interesting organizations operating at this intersection of social innovation, food, and revitalization in the city. We're showing a small subset here that we've so far focused on in our research. There are a number of interesting collaborations and connections across these organizations that we were surprised to find. From small startup organizations to big businesses, organizations are connecting, collaborating, committed to their commitment to the city around issues of food access, entrepreneurship, and community development. We can identify a number of themes across some of these sustainable partnerships, including engaging with respect and humility as a partner, serving as an enabler to facilitate rather than dominate. Being an authentic with one's approach, ensuring that partners connect with their organizational goals so that it's mutually beneficial, and organizations that can serve as a broker role, connecting across organizations and individuals. We have two examples to illustrate these themes. In partnering with entrepreneurs, Food Lab has created a boot camp workshop. In this way, they serve as an enabler and a broker. Bringing together entrepreneurs from across the city and connecting them with one another, so they can build their networks and also strengthen their business plans. As another example, the Detroit Lions are partnering with Eastern Market in a really respectful, authentic partnership. Together, these organizations are creating joint programs and activities that align their goals and draw on their unique resources and skills. For example, they created a program called Meet Up and Eat Up with the Lions, where they bring in Detroit public school students to the market, where they buy produce, and then they teach the students how to cook healthy meals with the Lions executive chef, as well as learn about healthy choices from players and medical students in the city. Our cube is all about collaboration. Between faculty, with students, as allies with Detroit organizations, and in our findings around sustainable partnerships, we hope that you're inspired, like we are, 
about this positive organizing going on in the city and that you want to learn more about the collaborations that are generating so much hope for urban renewal. Thank you.